Across the United States, Chinese drug trafficking organizations are rapidly expanding illicit marijuana grow operations, funneling illegally grown weed across the country. These large-scale underground farms are directly tied to appalling crimes like human slavery, but the U.S. government has largely turned a blind eye. For years, China has been waging a drug war on America, flooding communities with dangerous substances like fentanyl, now the leading killer of Americans aged 18 to 45. But fentanyl is not their only narcotic export. Chinese cartels are also behind many of the illegal marijuana grows springing up from California to Maine. As Chinese blood money continues seeping into the veins of small-town America, the human toll rises. The CCP profits while exploiting the most vulnerable among us. The hour is late, but not too late for U.S. leaders to confront this threat. The health and safety of our communities hangs in the balance. How China's fentanyl exports are poisoning a generation of Americans. The opioid epidemic gripping the United States has taken an even more sinister turn with the proliferation of fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid that has become a significant factor in the country's surge in overdose deaths, particularly among individuals aged 18 to 45. This demographic, once buoyed with the prospects of long, productive lives, now faces a grim statistic as the leading cause of mortality is no longer car accidents or diseases, but drug overdoses largely driven by fentanyl. Much of the fentanyl crisis in the U.S. can be traced back to China, which has been identified as the primary source of fentanyl and fentanyl-related substances that penetrate U.S. borders. Reports from various agencies, including the Drug Enforcement Administration, have detailed how China remains the principal source country for these substances, often trafficked through international mail and express consignment operations. Despite recent actions by Chinese authorities, including the control of all forms of fentanyl as a class of drugs effective May 1, 2019, there is evidence to suggest that the impact has been muted and that export to the U.S. continues. The potency of fentanyl cannot be overstated, it is 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. As little as 2 milligrams is considered a potentially lethal dose. Traffickers, recognizing the drug's powerful effects, frequently mix fentanyl with other substances like heroin and cocaine, often unbeknownst to the end user, increasing the risk of accidental overdoses. The factors that make fentanyl so appealing to traffickers also make it an especially insidious threat to public health. Its high potency means that it can be shipped in smaller quantities while its synthetic nature allows for production in labs without the need for expansive poppy fields, making it a nimble and discreet product in the black market's inventory. The implications of fentanyl's stranglehold on the unsuspecting American public are vast. Beyond the immeasurable personal tragedies of lost lives, there are broader social and economic repercussions. The increasing mortality rate from fentanyl-related overdoses exacerbates workforce issues, contributes to the destabilization of families, and inflates health care and law enforcement expenses. Despite the gravity of this challenge, countries like the U.S. and China have an opportunity to cooperate on intercepting fentanyl shipments, regulating its precursors, and curbing the digital facilitation of its sale. The situation also underscores the critical need for the U.S. to prioritize and provide access to addiction treatments, promote the distribution and administration of naloxone, an opioid overdose-reversing drug, and educate the public on the inherent dangers of opioid misuse, particularly when it comes to substances of unknown origin that could contain fentanyl. In conclusion, while China has implemented some controls, the ongoing flow of fentanyl into the United States signifies an insidious aspect of the drug war, a war not waged with guns or bombs, but with a clandestine traffic of a potent drug that claims more young American lives each year than any other accidental or natural cause of death. Chinese cartels exploiting U.S. cannabis legalization to take over industry. As individual American states legalize recreational marijuana use, an unexpected group is exploiting this budding industry, Chinese drug cartels. These criminal organizations are illegally growing weed on U.S. soil and leveraging legal gray areas to distribute it nationwide. 
In regions like California and Oklahoma, Chinese nationals are operating licensed cannabis businesses as a front to enable their illicit activities. Many of the thousands of marijuana farms registered in these states are directly controlled by Asian crime syndicates, skirting laws meant to allow above-board local businesses to enter the newly legalized market. The problem has grown so large that Oklahoma's Bureau of Narcotics has opened over 3,000 investigations into the state's nearly 7,000 registered weed farms for suspicious activity related to Chinese criminal groups. Officials report seizing over 700,000 pounds of illegal marijuana in 2021 alone. By obtaining official growing licenses, these Chinese cartel operations can hide industrial-scale illegal marijuana cultivation in plain sight. The legal status grants them access to rental properties, electricity, and other resources to smooth over their unlawful production. They also exploit loose cross-border cannabis laws to transfer black market weed between permissive states and more restrictive ones, raking in major profits. Many front companies run by Chinese gangs are also buying up real estate in states like Maine, building multi-million dollar infrastructure for off-the-books marijuana farming. These growing facilities are concealed behind the facade of a legitimate business. When investigators do catch wind of illegal activities tied to Chinese marijuana syndicates, the cartels use shell companies and complex ownership structures to evade oversight. On paper, the organizations appear lawful and locally operated. Foreign criminal groups like these are usurping the emerging cannabis industry from law-abiding American entrepreneurs looking to operate within the rules. And they show no signs of slowing down, as long as current enforcement loopholes remain open to exploitation. As more U.S. states consider legalizing cannabis sales, officials must be vigilant against infiltration by overseas crime cartels, only by closing regulatory gaps can legitimate businesses be protected from unfair competition by Chinese drug lords looking to profit off America's next great industry. Chinese weed takes root in rural Maine. The state of Maine has become a new frontier for illegal marijuana cultivation by Chinese drug trafficking organizations. Over 270 suspected large-scale illegal weed grows linked to Asian crime groups are now estimated to be operating across rural Maine, valued at a staggering $4.37 billion. These Chinese-run grow operations are spreading through small rural towns, with properties purchased recently by individual Chinese nationals from out of state. The new owners arrive in Maine from places like New York and transform quiet homes into elaborate marijuana greenhouses. This explosion of illicit cannabis farms has occurred rapidly since Maine legalized recreational marijuana sales in 2020. The state's permissive new pot laws have been exploited by foreign criminal enterprises seeking to root their black market activities in Maine's fertile soil. Many audacious illegal weed operations now sit on rural residential land close to schools, daycares, and other community fixtures. The pungent, unmistakable smell of marijuana emanates from previously innocuous neighborhoods. Asian crime syndicates like the infamous Triad are undoubtedly behind most of these large, lucrative grows. Local law enforcement has connected the dots between the Chinese nationals discreetly buying up property and the professional criminal organizations they work for. For industry experts, the writing is on the wall. Maine has become a new East Coast marijuana boomtown with Chinese drug lords instead of American prospectors. The state's previously small-scale cannabis cultivation has been replaced by a massive, foreign-run black market enterprise. Local officials have urgently sounded the alarm on this explosion of Chinese pot, grows and associated criminal activity. But so far, federal agencies have not dedicated the resources required to dismantle this new dark empire hiding among Maine's remote hills and farms. With hundreds of millions in illicit revenue at stake, the ruthless Chinese syndicates will not recede quietly. As their illegal roots continue to spread, the future of Maine's communities hangs in the balance. The government must act decisively before the state's pristine rural character is erased by a rising tide of Chinese weed. Spotting China's illegal cannabis farms next door
Across rural America, a new breed of neighbors has settled in discreetly. Behind the closed curtains of newly bought properties are the telltale signs of illegal Chinese-run cannabis grows. For unaware communities, recognizing these clandestine marijuana operations can help authorities clamp down. The most obvious indicator of a potential illegal weed facility is the overpowering skunk-like smell in the area. The pungent odor of marijuana plants cannot be masked, even by the most professional illicit growers. No matter how many fans or filters are running, the smell permeates nearby streets. Many recently purchased homes or buildings outfitted for cannabis cultivation can also raise suspicions, especially if owned by those of Chinese descent. While not all Chinese nationals are illegally growing weed, their presence merits a closer look. Upon inspection, several structural modifications may confirm unlawful activities. Windows blocked up with opaque materials allow indoor pot farmers to control light exposure. Large industrial heat pumps and excessive electrical equipment are dead giveaways. Of particular note are expensive upgrades like new AC units that do not suit an average residence. These are installed to manage humidity and ventilation when housing hundreds of high-maintenance marijuana plants. Sheds with suspicious electrical wiring, pools converted into water reservoirs, and continually running ventilation fans all point to an illegal commercial grow. It's rare for typical homeowners to require such high-capacity modifications. With hundreds of thousands of illegal cannabis plants being grown across the U.S., communities must be vigilant in weeding out these clandestine Chinese cartel-run operations. Reporting suspicious activity to local authorities when an illegal marijuana farm is suspected can swiftly mobilize action and enforcement. Uprooting Chinese-operated criminal cannabis enterprises thriving on American soil will require the cooperation of citizens and officials alike. By dismantling or shutting down these illicit facilities wherever they take root, the public can strike back against foreign drug lords working in the shadows of our towns. U.S. officials turn blind eye to illegal Chinese pot farms. From local police to federal authorities, officials across the U.S. are aware that illegal Chinese-run cannabis grows are spreading rapidly across the country. But so far, enforcement efforts against these illicit operations have been dreadfully lacking. For many law enforcement departments, marijuana crimes are not a priority, especially as more states legalize recreational use, with lethal opioids like fentanyl ravaging communities, scarce resources go toward fighting harder drugs. Weed seizures are seen as small fish compared to stemming the tragic deaths from substances like heroin and illicit fentanyl. This attitude has allowed illegal marijuana farming by Chinese cartels to flourish virtually unchecked. The hundreds of unlicensed cannabis grows run by foreign crime groups seem to sprout faster than they can be cut down. And simple possession arrests do nothing to stop the kingpins profiting immensely off of this black market sector. Confusing jurisdiction between federal, state, and local authorities also hampers enforcement efforts. With cannabis laws varying between states, officials seem unsure who should be spearheading action against foreign criminal enterprises skirting the rules. Federal agencies point to local police to handle enforcement, while local police claim no authority over regulations dictating legal versus illegal weed farming. This hot potato approach allows many illegal grows to go unprosecuted. With contradicting marijuana laws and enforcement priorities between states, the door is wide open for shady foreign cartels to grab market share in America's expanding cannabis industry. From buying real estate to obtaining growing licenses, Chinese gangs are easily maneuvering through gaping loopholes as officials bicker over who should crack down. The lack of robust action against illegal foreign cannabis growers has allowed serious criminal activity to take root and flourish across too many communities. Until officials at all levels make this issue an urgent priority with coordinated enforcement, Chinese POTS farms will continue operating brazenly from coast to coast while authorities turn a blind eye.